welcome back to Waters Ironworks. It has been uh, quite a while since our last video. We are still here. There was uh, some personal and then some scheduling issues uh, that came up that have prevented us from filming for the last few months, but we are back into it and we are looking to get back on a regular schedule. Probably be a little bit slow as we ramp up and build up a, a stockpile of videos to release. So today um, we are doing a real easy, simple video. What we're making is a simple forged candlestick. This one exactly. You can see real simple, a single um, 35 inch piece of one quarter inch stock, little spike on it, little handle. And now you've got a great item to sell or to give to someone. Um, look forward to, to making this with you guys. One big tip as we're going into this and you'll see it um, in the video, I talk about it. I made some of these last year you notice the difference in the height on the spikes. You don't want to try and shove this into a candle. This is way, way too long. Keep these little spikes nice and short and they'll work a whole lot better. So see you at the forge as we make the first video of the new year. So let's get to forging. The piece that you saw in the intro hasn't been made yet. We're going to make that right now. But like I said, I did make a couple, um, late last year that uh, I made a mistake on making the spike here too big, but we're gonna use this as an example. So where do we wanna start as we're forging this? Um, it can be real tempting to start at the exciting part here, but I think I actually wanna work on the handle and get at least this curling um, done and potentially even bending this around so that I've got something to hold this as I work this. Otherwise, I'm trying to hold it here while I'm doing my work on the handle. So if I finish this up first, it'll make everything a lot easier. So I've got 35 inches of quarter inch square stock that we're gonna use. Let's heat this up and start working on that handle. So you guys have probably noticed I love fishtail scrolls. I'm gonna do something very similar here. Just spread out the end of this a little bit. This thin stock will cool down real quick. Let's take another heat on that. All right. Let's finish spreading this out. Now that we've got it spread here, clean it up a little bit if we feel the need to. Making sure those edges are nice. Bump there, knock that in. Uh, we're gonna heat it up again, take it to the edge and start scrolling it around. Edge of the anvil. Start scrolling it down, bring it back. Just continuing to check it. Again, very small stock, cools off very quickly. I'm not gonna press it. Let's heat it up one more time and we'll finish that scroll. bad. Might have taken a little bit further than I needed to, but that'll work. So we're going to quench our little curl off, bring it to the horn of the anvil. Knock it around. It's kind of up to you much space you want in these. So for the handle, you're gonna be holding it like this. It's kind of up to you how long you want this to be, what shape works for your hand. I think that looks like it'll probably be okay. We do have a chance to adjust it when we're done. Um, actually, we can test it right now. Let's cool this down. that'll work okay. If you want to put a twist in it, you obviously have that option. It can look pretty attractive. You're not doing it on this one, um, but you would want to twist before you go in and do the handle there. We're going to flip it around at this point and start working on the other end. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come here, create a little bit of a shoulder on two sides. My goal is to really thin this stock out So it's 
easy for it to go into the candle. That looks pretty good. Let's get this hot one more time. We're gonna put a point right there on the end. Let's put that point on it right on the far edge of the anvil. Couple blows right there, nice sharp point. Keep it smooth. This is maybe even a little long, but I think we'll lose a little bit of length as we bend it. So we're gonna heat it up. And we're gonna bend it over for the next step. Edge of the anvil. Bend it up. Here we go. Now we've got the middle spike and we need to start curling it around. We're gonna do that over the edge of the anvil, get it hot. Just keep kind of knocking it around and curling it, just like any other scroll. Just keep going with it. I want a pretty tight curl here. So I'm going to work really to get this in as tight as possible. Let's take another heat on that, just to get that bend nice and tight. everything nice and lined up here and flat. I don't really want this bumping up. It's looking okay. All right, we're gonna heat it up again and we're just gonna continue scrolling it around now. This initial twist here is probably the hardest part of the whole thing. So let's just keep scrolling this around. One of the goals is to keep this as tight as we can. I think it looks more attractive and it's less likely to leak wax. Using the hardy or pritchel hole here to keep things nice and smoothed out can be a good choice as well, just so that spike has somewhere to go. I'm gonna stop talking here and just focus on the work. It's not a whole lot changes between each heat on this. We're starting to get close to the final size. I want to make sure it's going to be big enough for this candle that I'm looking at. So I'm just going to trace an outline of the candle onto the anvil. And I know I want something at least that size. Let's take a look at where we are. Look at that. We're right there. I still have a little extra material. I think I'm going to take one more spin around it, but I know now that I am at the size I need. definitely get to the point where you really start chasing all the little gaps um, but I think that looks pretty good so next step is we're gonna heat this up again we're gonna bend the handle up uh, this one may wind up having kind of a long handle on it uh, that's okay I could go more if I wanted to make that handle shorter but I want to make sure my hand is nice and up away from the candle when I'm using this so let's uh, let's bend it up and get it ready Oh, and we smushed it. That 
is okay. Don't worry a whole lot about that. So we need to twist this now um, so that our handle is coming out the, the direction we want it to be and then we'll need to bend that up. Let's work on that spike first. So I've got a pair of scrolling pliers here. I'm just going to bend that guy right back up. There we go. Let's get it hot again. and. We're looking to uh, get the heat right here in the middle. What I'll probably do is quench off the spiral, the candle base bit, and leave just that center section hot, grab two pairs of tongs and twist it around. We're gonna cool that down just so we don't mess anything up on it. We can bend it around, kind of shape as needed. One of the real values of having multiple sets of tongs. You do have some ability to just manhandle things when you need to. So there we go. That is looking pretty good. Let's uh, cool it down and test it out. There we go. Simple forged candle holder, great gifts, great item to sell as well. Um, I will do one final step on this. It's one that you don't see me do a ton on the channel. I normally do it after, but we'll go ahead and put a, a rust protective coating on this. So let's get it hot one more time. I've got it heating up. We're gonna be using Johnson's Paste Wax. This is one of, uh, one of the finishes I really like. It gives it a nice black finish. We're just gonna get a little bit of that quite a bit onto our rag here. The real trick is we don't actually want it super hot or we will just, the wax will catch on fire. That base of it was further down in my forge. It's gonna be a little hotter. So I'm gonna start up here on the handle and just try and coat it as much as I can. You can see how fast it's evaporating there. This is still a little too hot. What we wanna see yeah, is for it to kind of sit on there, smoke, not catch on fire. It works uh, very similar to the way um, cast iron cookware does. You're polymerizing a layer of the wax onto the steel. It provides a relatively robust um, coating that'll slow down, although certainly not prevent rust. What I'll do a lot of times is I'll make all of the, the pieces that I'm working on, right? And just worry about the, the forging. And then when I get to this stage and I wanna put the coating onto it, I'll normally take it, heat it up in the oven, um, get it up 350 degrees, 400 degrees or so, and then pull a piece out of the oven, wax it down, um, and then that piece is, is done and ready to go. If you are looking for a food safe coating, you can do the exact same thing with, um, uh, even like bacon fat or something, but um, any of the canola oil, um, things like that, flaxseed oil works real well as well. Um, multiple coats will get this darker and darker and darker um, every time you do it, but I am real happy with the way it looks. It works and uh, you know, I'm happy to be back uh, making more videos for you guys. Thanks so much and we'll see you again soon.